Before we get into this video, watch Season 4 Summary it leads perfectly into this one. And while you're there, you might as well watch the rest of the My Hero Summaries. Just click them, watch them. They're not that long. They're actually kind of long. But regardless, once you do that, let's get into the video. Immediately following Endeavor's victory over the High End Nomu in Kyushu, he and Hawks are confronted by Dabi, who targets the wounded duo, but is stopped in his tracks by the number 5 hero Mirko, then retreats. Soon after, Hawks meets in secret with Dabi, where it's revealed that the two planned the Nomu attack in Kyushu, though Dabi took it a little further than Hawks expected, but the hero is merely feigning cooperation with the League to gain information under orders of the Public Safety Commission. After only two days in the hospital, Endeavor is free to return home, where his family await him. Fuyumi tries her best to connect the family, and though Shoto is willing to give his father a chance, his brother Natsu still has much disdain for him. In a dream, Midoriya has shown a glimpse of the past of All for One and his little brother, who stood up to his tyrannical brother despite his frail body, and was eventually bestowed with a quirk by him that became one for all. Midoriya shares his experience with All Might, who is surprised to learn he communicated with the first one for all wielder and the two agree to keep investigating this phenomenon. Later that day, Class A and B gather together to go head-to-head -to -head in some team battles, with Hitoshi Shinzo joining the class as a trial to transfer into the hero course. The rules are simple. Two teams of four compete with the goal being to capture four opponents within 20 minutes. With Shinzo competing once with each class. If the 20 minutes run out, the team with the most people captured will lose. The first match is Juroto Shishida, Ibarashi Shiyozaki, Kosei Tsuburaba, and Hiryu Rin versus Asui, Koda, Kaminari, Hirishima, and Shinzo. Shinzo's inexperience initially holds his team back, but after the fight turns into a 3v3, Asui and Hirishima's tactics allow his brainwashing quirk to shine, and the resulting breakdown of communications leads to Class B's defeat. Soon after, match 2 consisting of Itsuka Kendo, Shihai Kuroiro, Kinoko Komori, and Manga Fukidashi versus Yaoyorozu, Aoyama, Tokoyami, and Hagakure kicks off. Tokoyami gets to show off the new move he developed whilst working with Hawks, but Class B's strategy courtesy of Kendo proves too unpredictable for Class A to counter. After Kendo gets Yayorozu cornered, she gets the one-on-one -on -one fight she's been wanting, and though Kurieti pushes her to the brink, she is captured just like the rest of her teammates. After they switch locations, the third match gets underway with Tets 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 Tets, Juzo Honanuki, Sen Kaibara, and Pony Tsunotori of Class B, facing off against Ojiro, Todoroki, Ida, and Shoji of Class A. The fight turns into a full-on brawl with little real strategy going on, and one-on-one -on -one fights taking place all over the arena. But eventually, 20 minutes pass, and the match ends in a draw. Match 4 involves Setsuna Tokage, Kojiro Bondo, Togaru Kamakiri, and Yosetsu Awase, versus Bakugo, Jiro, Sero, and Sato. Bakugo orders his underlings to follow his lead, and promises to save them from any trouble as long as they do the same for him. Their overly simplistic plan works as their gangbusters approach overwhelms Class B's hit and run approach, allowing Bakugo to back up his words with his team winning 4-0. And lastly, the fifth match consisting of Reiko Yanagi, Neito Monoma, Nirengeki Shoda, Yui Kodai, and Shinzo face off against Midoriya, Uraraka, Ashido, and Mineta. With the match underway, Midoriya tries to get his opponent's attention but after being egged on by Monoma into speaking, our young hero seems to develop a new quirk which he is unable to control. However, after he allows himself to be brainwashed, he is confronted by one of the successors of One for All in his consciousness, who just so happens to be the wielder of the quirk he spontaneously manifested. He tells him to control his heart to control the quirk, and when he snaps back to reality, he is thrust right back into the match which becomes an all-out brawl. He shifts his focus to Shinzo as his teammates handle the others, and in the end, they win with a clean sweep. So, the class ends with Class A taking the victory on the day, and in the critique, Aizawa gives Shinzo a passing grade, essentially placing him in the hero course for the following year, though he, much like everyone else, still has lots of hard work ahead of him. Later, Midoriya trains with Bakugo to test his control of his new Black Whip quirk, but after using it once successfully in the match, he is now unable to release it. Aizawa attempts to have Monoma copy Eri's quirk, so he could teach her how to use it, but it turns out to be a blank. Then, when Eri apologizes for causing them so much trouble, Midoriya manages to cheer her up and encourages her to do her best. Mmm, that's interesting, that's interesting. You know what else is interesting? Oh, you haven't liked and subscribed to the video yet.
Look at my channel. I need all the help I can get. Click him right now. You could also try uploading consistently. That might help as well. Shut the fuck up. Not long after, no sooner do Todoroki and Bakugo receive their provisional licenses than they are cleaning up the streets from villains on their way back home. Elsewhere, in Deka City, Shigaraki is at the center of a disaster that levels much of the city. But surprisingly, people's faith in heroes remains strong for the time being. Back at UA, Mount Lady helps the students practice their interview skills, with some students clearly more cut out for the limelight than others. The teachers are then essentially ordered by the Public Safety Commission for the students to get some pro experience by starting up the hero work studies again. And the students receive the news just as Christmas arrives, as they celebrate together, along with the incredibly adorable Eri. Afterwards, Todoroki invites Midori and Bakugo to do their work study together with him at Endeavor's agency, and the two accept. Meanwhile, in Kyushu, Hawks has a phone shot with Dabi, and the villain tells him that he has one more chance to prove his worth to the League. And as a result, the number two hero eliminates the recovering number three hero, Best Genist. After the students get a chance to visit their families for New Year's, they head off to commence their work studies. No sooner do the trio greet Endeavor than they are shown how fast the number one hero works, as they are unable to keep up with him. Hawks happens to drop in to help as well, and whilst there, he gives a book to Endeavor, seemingly containing some hidden message, unable to convey what it is, as he's being watched. Later, Endeavor deciphers a message which reads that the enemy is the Liberation Army, who number over 100,000 and are planning to strike in four months. The Liberation Front is who Hawks is spying on for the Public Safety Commission, and they have recently merged with the League of Villains. As Endeavor connects the dots at the work study as insurance for the hero's fighting strength, he resolves to personally train his three work study students. His goal for them this winter is simple, show that they can capture a villain faster than him just once, something that proves more difficult than it sounds. After multiple days of staring at Endeavor's ass, the group are invited to the Todoroki household for dinner, where Midori and Bakugo witness firsthand the dysfunction of the family. Yeah, they still got a lot of work to do. On Endeavor's way to drop off the students back home, they are attacked by a villain who has a hard-on for the number one hero, hoping for his life to end at his hands. But seeing his son Natsu as a hostage causes Endeavor to freeze, though luckily the students put what they've learned into practice, and after only a week, accomplish the goal Endeavor set out for them. They capture a villain before him. And Midoriya manages to use his new quirk on the control for the first time. Then Endeavor has a heartfelt talk with his son about not wanting his forgiveness, but instead, wanting to atone for what he's done. Natsu's older brother Toya died in a forest fire, and he blames his father for it. After the end of winter break, Aizawa and President Mike are taken to Tartarus, where they visit Kurogiri, a Nomu. The reason they are there is because it is believed that their deceased childhood friend Oboro Shirakuma's remains served as the base in Kurugiri's quirk creation. They are led in to try and get through to their old friend, and through Aizawa's strong emotion, they seem to begin to reach past the Kurugiri facade, but in the end, get nowhere concrete. A few months prior to the work studies, Tomura comes face to face with Giganto Makia, who outright rejects him as All for One's successor. But when Dr. Daruma Ujiko, another one of All for One's chief comrades, warps Tomura to him, he shows off his arsenal of Nomus and says he will agree to help him if he can make Giganto Makia submit to him. Over a month passes as Tomura endlessly struggles to bring Giganto Makia to his knees, and in the middle of it all, he is contacted by Redestro, leader of the Metal Liberation Army, with a proposition. Either come to Deka City within the hour to be crushed by them, or have their location revealed to the heroes and meet the same fate. Oh yeah, and they have this guy hostage, as if that matters. So, Tomura heads to Deka City with the plan to have Gigantomachia track him down and overwhelm the army once he wakes up. He's got a good nose. But before that, the League have to survive against an army of thousands. First against the ropes is Toga, but being near death pushes her quirk to another level as she drinks some of Uraraka's blood and is able to use her quirk for a short time. But she collapses from her injuries and then twice pushes past his limits in order to save her and the rest of his comrades, with thousands of copies of himself dispersing at once. With the help of his now vast number of allies, Tomura is able to reach the Liberation Army's leader. Okay, a little break in the video. I guess I should explain the Metal Liberation Army's purpose, yeah? Their goal, started by their first leader, Destro, is to build a world where everybody can use their quirks freely. But that guy was put in jail and commits suicide after finishing his book. Reed Destro is his ascendant, 
and has made it his goal to realize his ancestors' ideals. Now back to the main storyline. As a Tomura double occupies Redestro, the real Tomura sends the tower crumbling down. Redestro then uses his quirk that stores up stress's power to kill Tomura, but the young villain stubbornly keeps on standing up. As he sees the hands of his dead family members on the ground, Tenko Shimura remembers his past. His father, who was All Might's predecessor's son, despised heroes, and though overall he had a very loving family life, the day the young boy's quirk manifested was the day he killed his entire family. He said he hated his family, but I don't really believe him. <laughs> the first person to reach a hand out to this itching boy was All For One, who raised him to indulge in his destructive tendencies under the new name, Tomura Shigaraki. Tomura meaning to mourn, and Shigaraki being All For One's last name. Now, with his goal being simply to destroy, Shigaraki stares down the oversized Redestro and easily overwhelms him with sheer destruction. Now his quirk destroys not just what he touches, but whatever's connected. That's broken. In the end, Redestro states that the Metahuman Liberation Army will now follow Tomura. Giganto Makia also witnesses the reborn Tomura and finally accepts him as his master's successor. Then, one week later, the young villain reorganizes a group under the new name Paranormal Liberation Front with the former League members acting as lieutenants. Now that Tomura has proven himself, the Doctor is willing to grant him ultimate power, though he will have to endure four months of hellish pain in a lab to achieve it. Four months, he'll gain ultimate power, the Liberation Army is attacking in four months, now it adds up. Whilst the villains push past their limits, the students too show off what they've learned at their work studies. Then All Might sits down with Midoriya to encourage him to learn his master's quirk, now that he's mastered Black Whip. Then the students have a hot pot party to kick off the new term, and Aizawa has some encouraging- Shh, shut up! And Aizawa has some encouraging words for All Might, who's felt powerless to help the students lately. Then, four months pass, and all the work-study students gather together to support the heroes in the fight against the Paranormal Liberation Front that will shake superhuman society, for better or worse. And that's the Season 5 summary done and dusted. I hope you enjoyed. Season 6 summary, the most recent season, coming up next. Can't wait for that one. And once I finish that one, I might do some My Hero spin-off little videos. We'll see. And with that being said, I sure as hell hope you like and subscribe by now. If you did, take it easy and peace. If you didn't, take it easy and peace as well. See ya.